Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband in our 10th year anniversary. So we are now at Reindy Castle. I've actually taken one of the additional Kurjit castles off screen as, well, it was pretty easy. There were only around 140, 150 units in there. We didn't actually lose many people at all, surprisingly enough. I think it must have been the layout that was actually giving us that additional advantage but now we are going to be in a bit of a spot of bother because Reindy Castle this is our first Swadian fief that we are going to be dealing with here I'm not that convinced that it's going to be easy because obviously the Swadians they're actually encroaching on us right now and uh, have indeed taken two of our fiefs already so that obviously doesn't really speak very highly of our defense and well why should it really because i mean i've i've been pretty lax in in regards to my own defenses although to be fair i do have a number of vassals that are, are obviously working for us and hopefully they're going to be doing a relatively decent job going forward uh, i've got to be a bit careful about actually entering here because while they are actually providing us with a bit of an opening don't really want to die if i can help it so let me just sneak on by as best I can. And what we're actually going to be doing is, um, yeah, the, okay, so here's the thing. The only reason, and this is, um, I think someone actually mentioned this in the comments as well. The only reason why I haven't gone back to Wercheg to accept a bunch of the vassals, because obviously we have a bunch of vassals waiting for us to accept them, right? And it's fantastic for us to do that. It's really, really good. However, the problem with that is that we are then going to be in a situation where all of these vassals have the ability and will probably inevitably be leaving us for an alternate uh, alternate faction. So that's basically going to make it possible for them to then fight against us once our relation dips low enough with them. That is the only reason, because uh, apart from that, of course, I probably won't be able to provide fiefs to every single one of the vassals that I accept into my service. And obviously that's a pretty big deal, because obviously if I can't give them fiefs, then they're not going to be able to uh, field relatively large armies. And that's obviously another big point, because otherwise they're just going to be getting themselves taken prisoner over and over again, and it's just going to be a never-ending you know meat grinder basically of them getting taken prisoner they lose relation with me for some reason because they they got defeated i don't know why i would lose relation with them for for them getting defeated because they made poor decisions or something like that i'm not entirely sure but whatever the case they're going to lose relation from that and then they'll also lose relation from me providing fiefs to my other vassals now obviously here's the thing in a situation like let's say that we only had one enemy or two enemy factions remaining i'd probably be more inclined to do something like that because then we are probably not going to have many issues at all in regards to controlling the uh the the shall we say uh the outflow of vassals because if we lose vassals to one faction that's not too bad but if we lose vassals to three different factions and create a much more powerful entity that we are then going to have to fight ourselves tooth and nail to be able to, you know, <laughs> increase our, our prospects and increase the amount of uh, stability that we can have in the region, it's going to be just that much more difficult. That is the only reason why I have not accepted additional vassals. Just purely for the fact I don't want to make our enemies more, you know, more difficult to eliminate. Anyway, we've taken Randy Castle, as you can see right here. However, the Swadians have taken, they take they took Radagir Castle and Rindyar Castle. Now, I don't really begrudge them for taking Rindyar, but Radagir Castle, I'm a bit salty about that, to be honest, but it's all right. You know, it's not that big a deal. Because we are now going to make our way over to Dirim. Oh yes, over to Dirim itself. Because that is actually something I would love to be able to take. You can see here I basically made my path. So I went from Halmar over to Anuzdak Castle and then to Grandi Castle. And obviously we're now going to be heading over to Dirim. We're going to see who is actually there. Because, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. Hello. Ooh, this guy. Yeah, I think this is this might be the fellow that actually took Rindyar Castle. So we really do need to deal with him. 
as best we can. Now this is, oh wow, what a flat battlefield this is. Okay, this is going to be pretty easy for us, but potentially, I don't know. I mean, I have some pretty decent composition here, and hopefully that's actually going to make a pretty significant difference overall. I'm very surprised the enemy actually isn't charging in straight away. I would have expected them to charge almost immediately, but they apparently are having a bit of a uh, bit of hesitation. A bit of hesitation, which definitely speaks volumes for the uh, confidence that they have in themselves and indeed in their units. But here's the thing, they actually have a bunch of man at arms, and I'm wondering whether they even have some Swedian knights. I'm surprised that he decided to run away from me so readily. Because I would have expected him, considering he has actually some pretty decent quality units. To have a bit more, you know, a bit more, uh, <laughs> a bit more of a bravery feeling to, to his actions. But maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just his, his personality or something like that. Maybe he just doesn't want to fight too much. Maybe he only wants to do sieges or something like that. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just going to try and eliminate as many of the crossbowmen as I can. And maybe this guy, yeah, there we go. We took out that wonderful man at arms because we just... We do not want these Swadians running around randomly being able to eliminate basically anything they want. And that's the reason, actually, half half the reason, shall we say, that Swadian man-at-arms are really, really good. They're actually super easy to level up, um, surprisingly so, in actual fact. And then what you can do with them is they have such amazing horses. In my opinion, that's actually the one reason why they might be the best tier 4 uh, unit that you can get because their, their, their horse is so incredibly hardy and difficult to kill that you're going to have a big, big problem even dismounting them. Once they're dismounted, I think they're probably not going to be that difficult to deal with as you might expect with any, any cavalry because, of course, they're basically just, well you know, uh, slightly less good infantry at that point. But the, the point is, they have such good horses and their survivability is paramount. Very, very strong horses. And it makes a huge difference to their staying power and to their mobility on the battlefield. Because without that, they're going to turn into Kurgit Lancers. Because as far as I'm aware, Kurgit Lancers are running around on... Uh, what, step horses or hunter horses or something like that? I'm actually not entirely sure what they run around on, but their horses seem to be very easy to eliminate. So not sure really what's going on with that. Anyway, I'm actually going to take a Swadian Knight here to sell, just in case. You never know. Might be kind of fun. Uh, get, to get a little bit of money for that. And we now, uh, we do have a couple of level ups. Let's get some more mercenary horsemen. Do I have any Kurgit Lancers? I don't think I have any. No, I don't have any Kurgit Lancers. I mean, why would I, right? <laughs> I don't have any uh, Kurgit units in general. Okay, so let's have a look-see at Dirim here. Halmar has been besieged, as you might expect, but we're going to take Dirim, so that's not going to be too bad. Let me actually just have a look. Okay, we are at 71%. Is this a, this is a siege tower? Really? Oh. I didn't remember that okay uh well let's try it out right okay let's try it out maybe <laughs> maybe we'll be able to do something don't know whether you noticed by the way but lord gunda is actually attempting to besiege rindyar which is over there so i'm very very pleased with him about that and we also have radigir castle being besieged by lord logerson so he's obviously going to attempt to take that back too very, very happy and proud of our forces for actually taking the initiative for once because, as we know, you know, allied vassals are sometimes a little bit too hesitant for my liking. And, well, this time around, they're actually proving themselves to be very useful. Yeah, Randy Castle, as I say, not a big deal. Also, Halmar, really not a big deal either. And here we go. We've actually taken Rindia Castle back from the Kingdom of Swadia, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Okay, so let's now go in with our Siege Tower. Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, I like it. We're very, very close to the walls. Oh, wonderful. I just got out my shield and immediately got headshot. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see that? I was literally switching to my shield almost instantly. Well, I took a couple of moments, I suppose, but I wasn't really expecting to get headshot almost instantly upon loading in. Oh, well, never mind. 
that kind of thing happens and you can't really do much about it. All right, so let me actually just get out my crossbow. Shall I try and actually get a couple of kills with my crossbow? Oh, I actually got a headshot. Okay, I was not expecting that, that's for sure. I thought to myself, yeah, okay, I'll just try randomly, you know. I'll just try my luck, uh, suffice it to say. And, uh, well, that uh, actually worked out quite well, surprisingly. All right, <laughs> not too bad. Okay, so we've already eliminated a pretty significant portion of the enemy, but bear in mind, we are going to need that. We are going to need as many kills as possible because there are how many? 300, 340 or something like that? Yeah, I think they have like 340 in the garrison here, so that's obviously going to be a bit of a problem. Can I shoot that fellow from here? I can. Okay, I was hoping for a headshot, but no such luck. Oh yeah, my, my crossbow skill is still not amazing, but it's decent. It's okay. You know, it's going to get me some kills here and there. And that's going to be enough to possibly just take out a couple of enemies that are going to be um, a bit of a thorn on our side. You can see here that some of these crossbowmen are actually doing pretty big damage to me and that's also one of the reasons why the Swadians are actually kind of decent because they have some pretty good other units apart from just cavalry you may think oh the Swadia oh yeah I remember those they're the Swadian knight guys aren't they yeah well they are of course you know they're they're very good when it comes to their cavalry but their other units are not really anything to forget either they are not throwaway you know they're not throwaway units they they are actually very useful too so that's something to bear in mind. And uh, yeah, otherwise this is, yeah, okay, we're, we're perfectly fine. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, I was going to say, we're perfectly fine. And then uh, I'm, I was going to get headshot by one of these crossbowmen. Uh, thankfully, I seem to be avoiding their damage for now. Oh, I don't know what it is, but in this episode, I have just been completely harassed by all of these crossbowmen. I turn my back on them because I think to myself, oh, that guy's going to get killed by, you know, my forces coming in from behind there. And then all of a sudden, I have this fellow trying to bonk me over the head with the club. And I think, oh, okay, <laughs> what's going on there, you know? Uh, okay, well, whatever the case, uh, can I actually get past there by going downstairs? I'm actually wondering whether I can do that. Oh, this is very strange. This is very, okay, this is, this is a bit... That is a bit funny. The pathfinding in this particular area is quite funny because you can see here that my forces could very easily just move around and uh, encapsulate the enemy forces and just completely obliterate them. So much easier. But uh, they are actually, you know, doing things a bit more difficult. May I don't know, maybe they just want to have a bit of a challenge, you know. Sometimes that might be <laughs> actually the case. But uh, yeah, we're getting some enemies coming up here. Oh, that guy's head is phasing through the the archery nest i i i think he's gonna wake up with a bit of a headache look at that fellow right there yep he is certainly gonna wake up pretty uh pretty badly <laughs> if he wakes up at all that is i mean he's probably dead let's face it anyway let's just see if i can maybe eliminate a bunch here i've got to be a bit careful there was um th that previous siege that i did at um where was it Nuzdak castle if, uh, yeah, because I was obviously doing it off screen because I wanted to, you know, kind of just get that out of the way. And I was doing that siege and, uh, yeah, I got, I got in, I got into the battlements. I was, uh, you know, killing as many people as I could. And, you know, lo and behold, you know what happened? Oh, yeah. There were about 40 enemies remaining and I got headshot by a thrown weapon for like what was it 20 something damage I obviously had taken some pretty significant damage by that point of course and then I was forced to retreat and then I obviously had to go back in but it was easy enough obviously to eliminate the last last remainder of the units but um, it's just one of those things that you really have to consider when you're when you're fighting in native that is for sure. Because obviously if this was Pendor, right? If this was Pendor, I really wouldn't care, you know? I'd be like, oh yes, I don't mind dying here because it's actually going to be, um, you know, it's going to be continuing and my forces are going to be absolutely fine. But as it stands here, no, no, no such luck. Okay, this might actually be a bit of a problem. I would like to crowd surf if I can. Um, oh yeah, I remember this area. Oh, no, I remember this area. Oh, this is bad for me. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I actually... 
Can I tell my forces to hold position back up here? Yes, I can. Okay. I'm going to tell them to get out of the way for me real fast. If they actually do that. There we go. And now we'll tell them to charge in once again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to crowd surf when the next wave of infantry arrive. I'm going to crowd surf down there. If I can, if I can do that. I mean, I'm going to try, obviously, but maybe I'm going to fail. Okay, let me see. Uh, let's do it. There we go. Okay, perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Hopefully we're going to be okay. Oh, we can actually go down here. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, as I thought, I actually thought there was a gate here, to be honest. I thought there was a gate. That's the reason why I didn't go around here first. That would have made much more sense for me to go this way. Okay, so I didn't have to crowd surf. And this fellow is... Okay, this is a bit weird. All right, let's just free up a bunch of my very high-tier units that are just staring at that fellow from below. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing happens much more than I would want. Thank you very much. I don't even know how that Swedian man-at-arms got on top of that place, but he must have fallen off there somehow. And now... Now it's just a case of us staying alive. And uh, hopefully we will be able to do that. I love this Bardiche, though. Super, super fun to use. As I said before, I really do like the Bardiche. I think it's probably it's probably my favorite weapon in, uh, in Warband. I don't know why. It just has a lot going for it that I very much appreciate. For example, you will be able to destroy shields super, super fast because it does have that bonus against shields, as far as I remember. And uh, yeah, there you go. We were actually able to take Dirim super nice and easily. And now let's actually just take a quick look here. I'm going to be taking the Nord Warriors, I suppose, because we are, of course, going to be needing to defend, possibly. I'm not able to take any more of these rescued prisoners, which hurts me so badly, but we can't do much about it because we can't go above our capacity like we can in Bannerlord. All right, so let's just make our way over here. Um, I'm probably going to be giving this to Lord Logerson because he is actually defending Radagir Castle or attempting to take Radagir Castle, and I feel like he kind of deserves a bit of a reward for that. I was not expecting him to do anything like that, so, you know, it was a nice surprise. And otherwise, we're just going to be selling a bunch of things here. Uh, we got some of these. We're just going to sell that. I should probably sell something else. Sell this step horse and then just get this courser over here. There we go. And we'll just sell these things too. And then we'll buy a bunch of food. Yes, we need as much food as we can get our hands on. Thank you. And let's go into the tavern. Let's see if we can find any uh, any companions. Artimena, I've already sent him off once. So we don't really need to do anything with him again. All right, so let's just wait here for some time, and we'll see exactly what happens. Okay, so Count Clargus is attempting to besiege this. As you can see, Logerson was actually so incredibly good and effective that he's already taken Radagir Castle back, which is super, super nice of him, to be honest, because, as I say, I wasn't expecting anyone to actually help me here, but they seem to be coming out in droves and helping us, where we least expected, in fact. So that's, that's very nice. Okay, so Count Clargus... He has four Swadian Knights, and he has a couple of Sharpshooters and things like that, but that's not really that big a deal. Okay, so Halmar is obviously going to be super easy for us to take back. As you can see, we've taken back Rindyar and Radagir, so we've basically just gained territory here for now, because as I say, Halmar and Reindy, they're going to be super easy for us to take back. All right, so I'm just going to lay in a pursuit against Mr. Clargus here, and we will try and eliminate him. Oh, I didn't mean to click on the peace agreement. Thank you very much. <laughs> peace agreement against the Swadians. Who would ever ask that? Yes, indeed. Okay, well, it seems like the Kurgits are not really doing that much at the moment, so I'm actually kind of thankful for that. I don't know why. I, I assume that they're probably at war against the... Saranids, possibly, and that might be the reason because their attention is being taken elsewhere. And now we have a bunch of problematic situations coming at us right here in the form of the Swadian man at arms. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a little bit problematic. Oh, actually, never mind. I don't think this is actually bad because the enemy's ranged forces are down in the uh, little valley here with the river, and that is making everything so much easier for us because now the of Dirim, and there is a castle waiting there for us. I'm not sure if it's a ladder castle. If it's a ladder castle, we should be able to take it. But, again, it depends. There are those nightmare layouts that we really uh, we really don't want to think about right now. So, let's just 
cross our fingers and hope. I don't really know what Dirtios Castle is about. We're going to try and take it. And Sanuzk Castle is also there too. So I will be attempting to take that as well. Uh, Borcher actually leveled up. Oh, fantastic. Let's give him some more intelligence. We'll go for some more tracking skill, even though I personally think that tracking is one of the worst skills in the game. But uh, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna take it just because, you know... Maybe it's going to be useful. I, I have no, no, I have no idea really. Anyway, 175. This is a ladder castle. Okay, great. All right. So Rindyar has been besieged once again. I seem to remember actually, very long ago, I was playing. I think it was Blood and Steel. I think it was Blood and Steel. Basically, it's not a, it's not a total conversion, but it kind of turns the game in a bit into a bit more of an RPG. So you can choose from a class when you first start the game and, you know, in character creation. And a number of the skills have been revamped and it was just a whole bunch of fun. But now here's the thing. I remember very vividly that for some reason, the Swadians or whichever faction it was, I think, I think they still had the default factions in, in uh, Blood and Steel. But whatever the case, I seem to remember that the Swadians were so incredibly intent on keeping Rindyar Castle, that as far as I'm aware, they were fighting, I think it was the Kurgits or it was the Vajirs or something like that, I'm not entirely sure, and they basically passed it back and forth between each other over and over again, and I was thinking at the time, what are they even doing? They're, they're, what are they playing at? It, it, sound, it sounds like a, a huge Benny Hill, you know, sort of thing going on, you know? It's just like, why? Why would they do that? It doesn't... I don't know, it doesn't seem to have any strategic importance to me, but I don't know, maybe it does to the AI. Maybe they think that Rindyar Castle is super, super amazing for them or, or something like that. I'm not entirely sure, but whatever the case, let's see what we can do at Dirtios Castle. And we have a, okay, so this is a pretty easy layout by the looks of things. The ladder is not easy to navigate, which is a bit of a problem for me. <laughs> Uh, for no one else, but for me, definitely. And we are going to be seeing a little bit of an issue with the ranged units behind the first initial line of defenders. Because those ranged units, they're going to pick us apart as soon as we get to the top of the ladder here. Yeah, if we don't already get killed by the various crossbowmen on either side. But it seems like we're actually not doing too badly. Uh, I, I don't have a clear line of sight to the left side here, which I would very much like. But we can't really do much about that. We're just going to have to deal with what we have. Oh, I can actually shoot that fellow over there, potentially. Oh, no, we're now moving. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, it's basically one of those things. It's like when you're queuing, you know? It's like when you're queuing for a roller coaster or something like that. And you literally have to move when uh, when you've just decided that you're going to, I don't know, do something to occupy yourself because the queue is taking so long. You know, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> then I'm just like, oh yeah, okay, well, we're going to move and uh, now I'm doing things, you know. Now I'm actually doing things where we are slaughtering the opponent, which is exactly what we should do. And, you know, that's the funny thing. I said to you in a previous episode... The best way to do things, in uh, in Warband at least, and maybe in Bannerlord to a certain extent as well, is to try and assist your units at the very start of the uh, the the, uh, the defense, basically. Try to move the front lines further and deeper into the keep. But now here's the thing. I had an overwhelming urge to go over there to those archers and try to eliminate them instead. Not sure why that always happens to me. I always think to myself, oh yes, I should probably go and eliminate the archers, you know? I should eliminate the archers. They are they are the ones that are doing all the damage. But yeah, I mean that's the point. They are doing they are doing very good damage. But the main problem with dealing with the archers is that there are so many down here as well, and I feel like my forces kinda need some help, do they? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the ones up there on the balcony are not really the greatest threat. At least from what I can tell so far. I've got to be a bit careful here though because I cannot get pinned down. Which is exactly what will happen if I am careless. So let's just try to be a bit careful about this. Just going to try and eliminate as many as I can get my hands on. Just going to have to be a bit careful about interacting 
in a close fashion, but there's only 175 here. We don't really need to play for stamina here. We can kind of just go a bit more reckless. Like, if this was a town, I would not be doing this. You know, if this was a town, we'd be seeing many, many more reinforcements coming in as well. But thankfully, it's a castle, so we don't really need to do that. And it seems like we have indeed achieved victory. Okay, I'm actually going to tell my archers to charge in now. So that we can get some uh, some ranged support. I should have actually charged them a long time ago, all things considered. But you know me. Sometimes I forget about these things. And generally, even if I did forget about them, at least they're over there at the front line or at the uh, the front battlements. And they can basically just eliminate anyone that, that uh, you know, kind of walks by. And um, then we don't have to worry about anyone coming from behind us because there's actually an enemy over there. I don't know whether you saw that fellow. He, he just got killed by the uh, Vagia marksman. But um, yeah, there are a bunch of units over in that uh, little archery nest. Oh yeah, and now I'm going to die. Oh no, no, no. I'm okay, I'm okay. But yeah, wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be funny? Dying in the last two, dying in the last two units. I can't actually use my Bardish here, unfortunately. It's too close quarters. But yeah, there were actually a couple of units over there, and my ranged, my ranged people took care of them. So it's great. Anyway, there we go. We did end up losing six units, but that's not that big a deal. As I said before, we can basically just take some caravan guards, uh, manhunter, I guess, and hmm, forest bandits, I suppose. Forest bandits do become Swadians, so I suppose that's a pretty decent, pretty decent thing to go for. And otherwise, there we go. Uh, Dirtios Castle is now ours. And now I'm going to be giving this to Lord Logerson as well. I'm just going to try and, and continue increasing our relation with him. And as you can see, the only relations that go down are Nelag and Olaf. From what I can tell, I, I don't know. I, I didn't think I, I didn't see anyone else. Wait a minute. Let me actually just have a look. Uh, Nuas. Nuas also goes down, but that's absolutely fine. I think that's actually pretty perfect because... There's only three decreasing in comparison to what, what what is it normally six or something like that. Usually six vassals are really really annoyed at what I do, but oh well, never mind. Okay, let's put Jeremus down there, and I think I leveled up, didn't I? Yes, I did. Oh, okay, another point in intelligence, please. And what do we want to go for? Hmm. Ah, okay, yeah. Now this is this is getting a bit uh, this is getting a bit problematic. I mean, I. I, okay, so here's the thing. Technically, I could go for some more tactics, but the problem is it's going to take a long time for us to win battles if I have a lot of tactic skill. But if I'm up against a very large army, then having more tactic skill definitely helps. But am I going to be against large armies at this point? I don't know. Maybe, but if I'm smart, then I probably won't because then I'm, I'm going to get trapped or something like that and I most likely won't get trapped in those situations. I could go for Persuasion. Yep, let's go for Persuasion. Why not? I think that sounds like a good idea. Because if we go for Persuasion and we get a bunch of companions, we can always tell them and indeed may maybe, you know, persuade them to not leave our service. I, th I feel like that sounds like a pretty good idea. Anyway, we're going to go back to Halmar right now, uh, now that we've taken Dochios Castle. Radagir Castle has been besieged once again. I, again, I don't really mind that too much. As I've said, I feel like many of these things that they are attempting to do are uh, they're they're kind of fruitless. They're kind of fruitless, and not sure, not entirely sure why they would even decide to do that. Because again, Radagir Castle, it might very well be a pretty weakened fief, because it is. You know, its uh, its defenses are very weak indeed, but it's not really gonna give them anything too amazing you know it's it's just a castle it's not a town it's not really gonna give them a massive amount of money or uh, you know control over the area it's nestled against a forest and like a, a small outcropping of a mountain I think isn't that where Radiger Castle is yeah something like that and it doesn't really speak to me as being a particularly important fief and we've just taken dirham as i say we've just taken dirham so the ai has generally a lot of different options for them to take yeah i mean they could take radagir they could take dirham they could take Dirchios. they could be at any number of things that they could go for and they're deciding to take that random out of the way one i don't know <laughs> it's a bit weird but it's fine it's fine i don't really mind that and we all we need to do now is pretty much just 
try to eliminate as many vassals that we can that we come across. I'm actually surprised that the enemy is being so slow about things as well because uh, I don't know whether you've noticed, but whenever we get into visual range of any of these vassals, they're always moving really slowly. They, they feel like they're moving at a snail's pace in comparison to, you know, us. And you'd think that they would actually move a lot faster because they have, well, they should have primarily cavalry-based units. I mean, obviously, if we were facing the Kurgids, then this would be almost impossible. I think it would be very difficult to catch up with them because they are just going to be moving so quickly with, their, with all their cavalry and things. But the way it is now, I would have expected them to move really fast. Like, for example, this fellow, Grainward, he literally only had militia and recruits and then he did have a couple of men at men's arms but he only had 11 of those so i suppose that's the reason why he was so slow he just had a huge amount of infantry and that's basically it so i guess that answers my question anyway let's go over to halmar and see exactly what's going on there if um if Durham does come under siege i will go over there and try to def to defend it but i'm i'm looking oh, 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 oh. oh who left halmar by itself with literally no units inside this is exactly what I'm talking about. Boom. Look at how easy that was to take. And we're going to be giving this to... Uh, who should we give this to, actually? Lord Nuas, I guess? Maybe? I mean, he seems like he's doing a decent job for us, isn't he? I have no idea. And it seems like not many vassals disagree with giving that to him, so I'm actually kind of happy with that. There is a tournament going on here, but I probably won't be doing that. Let's just go and sell this stuff. Uh, let me see. Do they have anything else? No, we just got bread and grain. Oh, they, they barely have any money. Oh, well, that doesn't really matter. We're not really hurting for money at the moment as it is. All right. So, Ransom Broker. Oh, yeah. Actually, Ransom Broker. Let me do that. I can... Oh, I can't sell this guy? Really? Okay, we'll just sell the Swedian Knight. And there is actually a book merchant here. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm not entirely sure if I want to buy any of these right now. Um... Uh, I keep forgetting which one does which. I need to look this up, actually. I need to look this up to see exactly what's going on. I know that this is engineering, right? Mechanical theorems. Essays on logic, that's what? Um, tactics, maybe? Mm, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's tactics. Uh, this is leadership, I think. And that's obviously trade skill and fighting with swords. That might actually be the, ta that might be the tactics one. Essays on logic, what's that? What is that going to be? I don't know. I guess I'm going to have a look at it. I will buy this, actually. I will buy the engineering one because I would like to read that at a later point. And it's good for me to have that at the very least. But yeah, we have now taken Halmar super easily and we can now head on over to Reindy Castle as well. All right. Uh, how many do they have here? I actually have no idea, but I'm going to try and... Yep, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Easy enough, right? Yeah, so we got them too. And I'm thinking... Ah, should I give this to? Who should I give this to? I'm thinking... I don't I don't actually know. Um, who has need of castles? Gunda, potentially? Yeah, Gunda, I guess. Yeah, that seems... I guess that seems pretty decent. Why not? All right. Okay, so this is what the map currently looks like. Tilbo Castle and Sanusk Castle, they are a little bit of the outliers here. I do need to take that. But we have actually expanded at a very dramatic pace. I'm kind of surprised that we were able to do this without any influence from the Kurgits creeping in from the northeast. Very, very surprising indeed on that. I would have expected them to take advantage of the Swadians declaring war against us and trying to pounce and do something somewhat useful but apparently they are not doing anything like that anyway that's going to be it for this episode i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time